next? Einstein, Sir Richard Branson, Steve Jobs and Darcy Bussell. What do they all have in common? Yes, they're all high achievers, but all also have dyslexia in common. So why is it, despite so many dyslexic people being great problem solvers, many still find it difficult to get work in London? But as Sarah Harris reports, attitudes are beginning to change. Looking for a job in London, Annalise Evans has spent much of her working life in Germany where she says being dyslexic is not seen as much of an issue. She believes modern technology means her spelling issues shouldn't be a barrier to her succeeding in a job. There's a lot that a dyslexic employer can give to um, a job or, or to a company. Um, I think that, that there is more recognition of it as a learning difference than a learning disability because there are advantages associated with it but we're still a long way from you know getting rid of the disability stigma um, in, in my opinion it's just a different way that my brain's wired and I'm quite happy with that. In King's Cross Matt Boyd has set up a service to help people like Annalise get past the written application stage to get a job. As a dyslexic himself he knows just what the challenges are. I did some more research and I found out for every 10 people unemployed in the UK for a dyslexic, whereas the population as a whole it's one in ten. So there's loads of uh, missed talent out there from employers and they didn't have any recruitment procedures in place and there wasn't any support available. Matt's agency is the first in the country to match applicants with dyslexia with companies who aren't put off by their different way of thinking. So we've got this to these departures going out in January, so how many volunteers have we got? 44. Balloon Ventures in Camden support entrepreneurs. They say A-stars in A-levels don't necessarily make for a practical approach. It's not academic skills that are needed in the entrepreneurial environment. Um, there's a very different approach to problem solving um, when it comes to entrepreneurship. And it's that approach is discouraged um, by traditional um, learning environments, schools and universities. We're not just happy to recruit people who might have dyslexia, um, we actively want to recruit. Annalise is hoping this open-minded thinking will land her her first job in the capital. Sarah Harris, BBC London News. Now with me now, you may know Charlie Borman as a presenter, travel writer, known for his enthusiasm of motorbikes, but he's also president of the charity Dyslexia Action. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, are you surprised to hear Annalise say there that there is still a stigma surrounding dyslexia? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I think all my life I've always, I've always struggled to sort of explain to people, you know, what, what dyslexia is. I mean, obviously years ago it was much worse. I mean, I think, I think in Europe and, and certainly in America they were, they were onto it much much more and much more quickly. I mean, I was seven, seven years old when I was in America when I was when I was diagnosed with it. And, and, and so, is, it, is it true you had to explain it to your teachers? <laughs> yeah, when I, I did. Yeah, it was, it's interesting. I was, I was. Um, they asked me to stand up to read, and I said I, c I couldn't because I'm dyslexic. And so I was sent to the headmaster, and so I then had to explain to him um, what that meant. But you know, we've 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 gone past that part of it now. I mean, I mean, I think there are. You know, Dyslexia Action would love to, to, to have somebody in every single school and, and, and come the age of around seven, eight years old for, the, for, for children to be diagnosed then and, and, th and then, you know, they can find out whether they do or don't if you're, if you're, if you're concerned about your child. And that's roughly around, this, around the time. But there are plenty of places um, to be able to test your, your children. Um, so so, so it's, it's not so bad there now. And, and, the, and, the, and the tools are there now to be able to to give to kids if they're young to be able to sort of um you know work through their life and, and as adults i mean one of the key things that came out from that report is you know the key message to employers is you know you could be missing out on the next branson or steve jobs you know these are great problem solvers but they may not be yeah. the best at writing a cv yeah i mean i mean and, and as well as that you know i mean, i i find that that in, in through my experience when you speak to people like branson or or, or other people who, who who are entrepreneurial and who are dyslexic you know they they think very much out of the box you know so 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 it it, it actually it's actually quite beneficial to have somebody somebody there who thinks slightly differently now whether whether that person can spell properly or not i, I would say most people in business and working can't spell anyway because we all rely on our computers so much now anyway but but uh, but i think I don't think it costs anything to give someone a chance and you know you, you're, you're going to give them a couple of months trial anyway so you know give it a go and and you might be and you probably will be very pleasantly surprised now in case people didn't know it affects 10 percent of people mm -hmm. 
people mm-hmm. in the UK. Do you think enough is being done about it? Because I know there are things happening in London this week. Yeah, I mean, this week, you know, we've got a week of, of, of dyslexia action, sort of a, um, a sort of explaining to people. On Wednesday, um, in, in the London office, we have uh, an, an open day so people can come in and, and get information about maybe writing CVs. We're, we're working with um, Leithwaite at the moment, who are one of the biggest recruitment um, uh, agencies in, in, in London and, you know, a very powerful company and they're very much behind it. Um, so we're going to do a whole load of work with them uh, uh, tomorrow and, and let's see if we can't, you know, change people's, people's minds. I, I don't think it's, it's, it's to do with, with, um, with prejudice or anything like that. I think it's much more to do with the fact that, that you know, people just don't know and, and, okay. and, and are, are maybe slightly ignorant of, okay. of the thing. Uh, Charlie Borman, we will leave it there. Many thanks okay. indeed for coming in. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much. And there is more on that story, including details of Charlie's charity and the events that he was talking about there to mark Dyslexia Awareness Week on our Facebook page.